Does the, does the military, whether you want to answer this or not, does the military use this technology at all? Oh, yes, they do, uh, particularly in, in traumatic brain injury and PTSD. So it's... it's post-traumatic stress. Going, yeah. Yeah. Yes, post-traumatic stress disorder. Thank you. Yeah. You know, this is my own language, so <laughs> I just speak it as everybody, everybody knows this stuff. But no... I met um, uh, the head of the American uh, uh, Army um, uh, Medical School. They are the biggest. They have T-shirts with tanks on it saying, our medical school is bigger than yours. You know, these guys are, are will, really well funded. And he gave a speech in Denver and he talked about um, the, the, the problems in, in, say, the Vietnam War, where they lost over 50,000 boys um, uh, killed. They lost 150,000 uh, 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 after the war to suicide, um, uh, PTSD, or violent death. And they did an analysis of those 150,000 soldiers, and they found two things. One, the, the undiagnosed uh, uh, brain injury, blast injuries, mm. common. And the other is PTSD, right? So... The brain gets in a fear state and it locks in, right? For example, I had a, a patient with PTSD and he told me this story. He was in a coffee shop and a car backfired out the front. Well, as he was diving to the, he said, you know, as I was diving to the floor, frothing at the mouth in a, in a total panic attack, he knew it was a car had backfired. So this part of his brain said, that's a car backfiring, Walter. What do you? Think? <laughs> but the rest of him was in Nam. Down he went, right? And it took twenty minutes for him to come out of that, and it made a bit of a mess in the coffee shop. Now this is an example of the things that can uh, the neuroplasticity going wrong. That is, it adapts, but not healthily. So neuroplasticity, that, that famous word now, mm. has its positive and negative. So. The, the, the head of the medical school was very, very clear that the U.S. Army is now taking this stuff seriously. And they want to, they have battlefield ready QEG brain mapping machines, computers that can take everything but a direct bullet. So, what they're going to do is be able to assess who's been hurt. Say, if a blast injury in, in Iraq, say, if you've blown out of a humpy, they can put a, a, a cap on them and decide who's got. Uh, likely um, uh, traumatic brain injury and who's got the likelihood of PTSD. That's their thing. So they put which plane you go on depends on those findings and early intervention is the key to a lot of these things. So they're very serious. Now that's one of the biggest medical schools in the world and, the, and many of the um, um, uh, uh, treatment programs they have scattered around America are, are using EEG biofeedback and biofeedback technologies to help these, these soldiers through. And we're showing very good results. So it won't be too long down the track that this will be common. It won't be an outlier, um, uh, edgy uh, uh, therapy. It'll be mainstream.